so don't worry about it. All right. It's too long though, though. Osley. Osley. Okay. Cool. All right. So without further ado, let's bring on our guest, Pam Osley. Welcome, Pam. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Uh, it's a beautiful Perfect. fall day here in New England. And how's the weather out there in California? Ah, well, I don't know when you're airing this interview, but we, we let's, the state's on fire right now. Let's just put it that way. It's the fall here. And we have the weather's beautiful. It's blue sky and mild 70s. But um, it, you couldn't tell because we have a lot of smoke in the air. Mm. <laughs> very smoky here yeah. so we're, we're we're focused on putting the fires out nice nice now can you tell us a little bit about um why don't we start at the beginning what's your earliest memory from childhood where you got a sense that there's something more to life something more Wow, you know what, this is going to sound strange, but my very first memory that there was something more going on here, believe it or not, I was still in a crib. So I don't know how old I was, somewhere between one and three, excuse me, <coughs> see, smoke in the air. And um, I remember looking up in my crib and seeing on the wall, no one's ever asked me that question before, by the way, and I've been doing this for 35 years, and mm. I'm only 27 years old, so how's that <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember looking up and seeing a picture of Cinderella and the and the pumpkin, and my mom had put a picture of Christ on the on the wall. Where in the daytime the eyes were closed, and the nighttime the eyes opened up. Oh. And I had a sense of spirituality and magic all at the same time. And I know I was between one and three years old. I don't know. I don't know when you take a child out of a crib. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, same here. I remember being in the crib and the little toys hanging across and, and things like that. Yeah. And so that was, you, you've had a sense of spirituality from the crib. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I see auras and I have a blue and yellow aura and blues from day one. Our, our whole life is about spirituality and, and being in service and love and relationships and people, love and spirituality. So that's been my whole life. Has been about spirituality, well, and consciousness, and now quantum physics and spirituality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all goes together. It does. Yeah, it seems to me that um, children, you know, young kids, babies, they've just arrived from the other side, so they still remember, you know, being there. And as they grow, and you know, they turn six, seven years old, the age of reason, let's say that that fades and you, you you forget yeah oh i can't tell you the number of people who bring their children to me or they tell stories of their children before the age of four that are recounting other lives mm. in detail yeah. they remember their parents first names where they live what the house looked like what kind of pet they had it's amazing and usually between the ages of four or five and then for sure six and seven it's gone yeah did you find that true with your your own uh, upbringing? Did you start forgetting or is it just kind of, it stayed with you, right? Spirituality did. Having a sense that there was something greater did. Mm -hmm. um, I never had a sense. I didn't know until I was 30 years old that I had, um, people call it psychic. I'm going to call it expanded consciousness abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I went to hear a psychic speak. <clears throat> Excuse me, can smoke. I went to hear a psychic speak. He was here from England. And I went in, room with other people. I walked in and he went, you, you know how to do this. Get up here. And I went, what? <laughs> oh, wow. no, I came what? to hear you. What are you talking about? So he just kind of threw me in the room. And he said, you start telling people what you see about him. And I was shocked to see that I actually knew things about people. Um, and that was when I was 30 years old. And like I said, I'm only 27 now, so I'm no. <laughs> and, and a year after being able to find out I was had expanded consciousness, intuition, ex advanced intuition, psychic, clairvoyant, whatever you want to call it. A year after that, I met a woman who could see auras and it matched what I was picking up about people psychically. Mm -hmm. So then I developed the ability to be able to see auras and energy fields. So it wasn't, I, I didn't have that. I didn't have that when I was little, but as soon as I started doing my psychic work, expanded consciousness work, um, 
I looked back and went, oh, no wonder I knew that. Oh, no wonder that happened to me. So I started putting the pieces together backwards because I wasn't trained to, I was raised Christian and I wasn't tr trained to believe in any of that expanded consciousness, psychic stuff, whatever. So when I started looking back, I went, oh, no, no wonder. I get it now. Holy cow, I had it all along, but I didn't know that. <laughs> it, wasn't as, it wasn't as precise as it is now because I've been doing it for a while so I'm very practiced in it now but I definitely had some some oh I get it now I mean for example and I haven't told this story to anyone either I was a young girl I was hanging out on my uncle's farm up in Washington state and I went horseback riding bareback and I had my boyfriend's ring on how right? old are you so, um probably 14 maybe 14, I think about then could have been 12 to 14. Anyway, I had my boyfriend's ring on cause he had a little ring and I went horseback riding bareback. And I came back after riding in all these, he, he had acres and acres and acres of crops in alfalfa fields. And I came back and the ring was gone. And I went, Oh my gosh, I was devastated. Cause you know, at that age, you want to be wearing your boyfriend's ring. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I got back on the horse. I went out into the field I got this sense to stop. I got off the horse, parted these gigantic alfalfa um, um, weeds, and I mean alfalfa plants, and there was the ring right there, right where I parted it. I mean, that, and seriously, this was acres and acres of alfalfa, and I'd been riding for hours. Yeah, so. You could have spent a lifetime looking for that ring and never found it. Exactly right. So I, I look at that when I was back there, a preteen, and I'm like, wow, see, no wonder I knew that. <laughs> Yes. And I haven't shared that story with anyone. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess looking back, it puts things into perspective and it probably changed your uh, belief system. You were taught Christianity, as you said. So has that changed and you view the world differently than what was taught in the Bible? Expanded me. It definitely expanded beyond that. I don't put anyone's beliefs down, no religions down. I don't put anybody else's beliefs down because honestly, Jonathan, right? Mm -hmm. You don't, yeah, you go by Jonathan, right? John okay. or Jonathan, yeah. John, John, I, I didn't know. Some people want to be called their whole name. So um, I, I, a lot of people were like, you know, children at first, you need rules, you want guidelines, you want understanding. To me, as I got older, as I expanded my awareness, yes, my beliefs definitely shifted and expanded with it. But I don't ever put anyone else down because we're all having different experiences here on the planet. We're all here for different reasons, different experiences. Um, so my understanding of reality and who we are and why we're here, all of that is definitely shifted. Yeah, I grew up with a lot of scary stuff, you know, bad things. Oh, be, be a good girl or bad things are going to happen to you. And you got to believe this or bad things are going to happen to you. So I, I no longer subscribe to anything that's fear-based. Yeah, I, I kind of see the Christian religion as that. They, they use fear uh, of going to hell, you know. And um, it kind of, kind of bothers me when I think about it because uh, the, your creator is so loving. and <laughs> There's yeah. no judgment or punishment or anything like that. In right. my experience, and um, I, I have some, I have some. Um, a lot of my Christian friends, when I first started doing psychic work, stopped speaking to me because they told me I was doing the work of the devil. But now they're all friends of mine again, and they have readings, and they've expanded out of the fear-based paradigm that they were in into no. We've always believed God is loving. It's not fear. It's all love. It's all love. So there are Christians and Buddhism, and you know, Buddhists and Z Z um. Jewish and that there's a lot of them that do believe in um, love as opposed to fear. It it's shifting, but some people need. <laughs> sorry, we have a fire helicopter going over my home right now. Uh -huh. It's going to be a little bit loud. Um, it, it you know everyone's different. It's shifting, but I am seeing much more love based faith teachings now than the fear based when I was younger. Yeah, I agree. I find that there's more people who are have been taught religion but their spirituality has come more to the surface and allowed them to see maybe beyond that and um you know they're good people here to do good things they were brought up in a certain part of the world maybe that has a, a particular belief system but 
you always have that core spirituality, I think, that guides you through all of that. Right? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So tell us about your new book. You have a new book out, right? That Infinite You? That's my latest one. Is that which one you're talking about? Yes. Or Life Color? Uh, well, what's your latest book? My latest one is Infinite You. Infinite You, uh, a, a Journey to Your Greater Self and Beyond. Well, at first, I've got four books out. First, Life Colors and Love Colors are about the aura colors and um, what they're like in relationships and career direction and personalities and life purpose. And then Make Your Dreams Come True is all about the beliefs that we're having that create our experiences here mm. and how to identify if you have limiting beliefs that are trapping you or making you unhappy, how to identify those, I play games in that one. And then I show you how to change those so that you can have a happier, more fulfilling, more prosperous and love-filled life. Nice. Now, Infinite You, thank you for asking about that because I love that book. I laid it all on the line with that one. Mm -hmm. I put down, I wrote all about expanded consciousness, what I believe we're really capable of doing and what I'm able to do. And then I show people once you start doing this, I teach people how they can do it too. So for example, in Infinite You, I talk about how we're really these amazing beings. We're not just little biological machines here. Mm. And so some of the things that I know how to do, and this is what I write about in the book, and I show people how they can do it. And I show the spiritual concepts behind it. And I show the quantum physics behind it. So there's a lot of physics in the book too, but in lay terms, I made it very simple. So I talk about being able to see past um, t outside of time, that's why I can do psychic stuff, how to do remote viewing, um, parallel universes, seeing energy fields or auras, how we create with our consciousness, different levels of manifestation abilities. Um, okay, there's so many things in there that I, I even teach people how, how we've bent spoons. <laughs> <laughs> so in all the workshops that I've done, so I just pretty much put it in there that here's the deal, Jonathan. Um, Every time we've expanded our awareness of what's possible, we have more freedom. So, for example, we used to think that the, well, I don't know about you. I didn't ever used to believe the world was flat, but they used to believe the world was flat, right? Mm -hmm. And so we had a limited space on what we could move around and travel to because the world was flat. You go beyond that, you fall off, right? And they would punish you if you disagreed with that notion. That's right. That's right. So as soon as we discovered the world was round, we had more freedom. It's like, whoa, wait a second, more options, more freedom. We didn't used to believe it was possible to fly. And then they discovered the principle of aerodynamics. And now we've got more freedom because we can fly. We can go over to Europe. We can fly around the world where before that was either impossible or would take a lifetime or months or years to, to travel. So. Quantum physics to me has revealed so many amazing things about the nature of reality and non-local mind and entanglement. I mean, you know, how complicated you want to get it. Mm -hmm. But when I really, and parallel universes, when I really started studying that and seeing how it fit in with what I believe our spiritual teachers were showing us, what, who we are and what we're capable of doing, went, well, that must make it, we, it gives us more freedom. So that's why I've done it for myself. I experiment with it. I say it's possible. It's increased my ability, my joy for life. It's increased my love and compassion in life. It's just really opened up everything. And it's so much more fun because of how much more freedom we actually have. So that's basically what's in the book and the science behind it and the spiritual concepts behind it. Oh, would you agree that... Um the earth is at a point where, um, you know, we recently had this 2012 alignment mm -hmm. and um, it's been suggested that there was a new energy created when that alignment happened. And depending how people on the planet use that energy will determine the future, uh, the, the course of uh, humanity. Uh, now, does that sound right to you? Or? Yeah, you want to get into some really out there, like out of the box thinking concepts? I'm sure? all about that. <laughs> sure? Okay, because I got one for you here, Jonathan. Um, and I actually got to speak to one of the world most renowned quantum physicist scientists on the planet, physicist, I guess, who, David Deutsch, his whole thing is about parallel universes. Hmm. Okay, so... Quantum physics actually has evidence that multiverses or parallel universes are real, right? Mm 
Yes. So I don't want to get too far out on people, um, but I want to explain it. Like, for example, and this is the example I used in the room you're in right now, there's at least 10 radio stations broadcasting around you, right? Mm -hmm. So those radio waves, or you can say television waves or signals or cell phone signals, websites, whatever you want to use, but I'm going to use radio signals. Those radio waves are around you right now all the time. They're all going on, but you're not aware that they exist because you're not tuned into them. But if you went over to your tuner and set it on, say, 99.9, you're going to hear the talk or the music or the conversation that's going on on that station. That becomes a reality for you because now you're connected with that, that frequency, right? But if you changed it over to 107, now all of a sudden that music, that talk, that program is part of, is your reality now because you're tuned into that reality, Country right? music yeah. or something, yeah. <laughs> but 99.9 .9 is still going on right around you. You're just not aware of it anymore because you're not matching that frequency. That is how I've experienced parallel universes. <clears throat> so that means that, and what they're saying in physics is every time you make a choice, a decision, um, and I'll use the example, Let's see something simple. You're walking down the street heading for a meeting with someone and you go, oh, guy, and you pass the store and go, oh, I'd really like to go in there and buy a new pair of pants or something. Oh, but I don't have time. So you go on to the meeting and yet there's a, a you in quantum physics. There's an actual you that split off and went into that store and bought those pants and is having a separate life. The, the one that went in and bought those pants. Now they're very similar. So you we, we shift parallel universes all the time into other frequencies all the time, but we only believe that there's only one reality. So we don't know that we've shifted in and out of these. And we've got movies that show it um, uh, somewhere in time and back to the future. Oh, mm -hmm. And just recently the movie yesterday, I don't know if you saw oh, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the guy that, that's parallel universes. He wants, he goes into another universe. There's a whole other story. So that's the same way with other lives. That's why I call them other lives as opposed to past lives, because we've been trained to think sequential, linear, step one, mm -hmm. step two. Step. That's how we think. But in reality, in spirit or outside of this framework, there's no such thing as time. So all of those are happening simultaneously. So, but coming back to this world, so when people go, well, where do you feel like the world's going? I go, well, which parallel universe do you want me to focus on? So the way we go into different frequencies, just like you change, you know, the station on a radio and you set a different frequency and it gives you a different program. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with us. We change into parallel universes with our thoughts, our beliefs and our emotions that's what brings us into another one. So there's a you that never got married at all. There's a you that married somebody else from high school. There's a you that doesn't live in Massachusetts right now. There's a you that chose to move someplace else. All of those beings are existing simultaneously. Do you see how science fiction this sounds? Well, yeah, it reminds me of, um, again, Rupert Sheldrake, who says yeah. that there's an energy field called, he calls it morphic resonance, yeah. and it allows a baby cat to tune in to the resonance of cats so that it knows how to bathe and do cat things because it's tuned in to the frequency in that overall energy field. And right. a, a dog tunes into a dog and a flower tunes into a flower. And we're all having different experiences. Mm -hmm. We think that everybody is having the exact same experience that we are, but they're not. Nobody on this planet. I like to do this exercise. You want to do a fun exercise real quick? Sure. This little exercise where find something in your room that take your thumb and just put it away from your, your eyesight a little bit and find something in your room and, and, and block that object with your thumb. Go ahead and do that right now. Okay. okay. And find something uh -oh. far away, far away from you, like on the wall or in the, across the room or something, put your thumb there. Now just look at it with your right eye. Don't move your thumb, don't move your thumb. Now look at that object with your left eye only. Uh -huh. Now your right eye again. Mm -hmm. Now your left, do you see? You go back and forth? Yeah. Okay, so watch. Your own two eyes on your own body with the same brain can't even agree where that object is in space. It's like it kept changing places. Yes. So there's no way we can expect anybody else with a different body, different training, different consciousness, different way of thinking and feeling to have the exact same perception as we do. So we're all basically um, 
Oh man, we could get into such deep quantum physics says there's no way to measure an objective reality because the observer affects the outcome of the experiment. So mm -hmm. we're all seeing something different. We're all having something different. And even if you're in one reality um, where you are married to your same person, same wife, and then you change into a parallel universe, she's still going to be there because you still believe in her. You still believe that you're the one that married her and you know, you guys are together, whatever. So we change universes all the time. They're seamless. So there's no walls, there's no doorways. So we don't know we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So back to your question of, do you believe that the planet <laughs> is shifting and people are, you know, we, we've got to do this. And I go, well, it just depends on which planet you're going to get aware of, connected to, or help manifest with your thoughts and beliefs. Quantum physics is actually saying that there's a planet that blew up in the 50s, that we didn't survive the Bay of Pigs, you know, the nuclear mm. explosions. There's, an, there's another universe where the Germans won World War II, and we're all speaking German right now instead of English. All of those universes, all of those realities actually exist but we're not aware of it because you didn't attach to that one. You are vibrating at a, just a different frequency beyond what we can discern. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's why when people go, oh my gosh, we're going to destroy the earth. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not aligning with that vision. I'm not aligning with that reality. I'm aligning with the one where, you know, we're waking up, we're evolving, we're going to take care of the earth. The earth knows how to take care of itself. So it's just my perception, therefore my experience. Does that make sense to you? I mean, we went way out there, Jonathan. <laughs> it's not a simple concept we just discussed. No, this is the life I live. So you're in my world. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, you know, when in my experience, when you're preparing to come down to earth for your next life and you're setting up your next life with your creator, uh, your guardian angel there, one of the things you have to accept is that the laws of physical reality exist and are in place and you can't change them. And you have, if you don't accept that, you can't come down here because otherwise you see that it's just all um, a hologram. So you have to accept it so that the lessons, you know, you believe what you're doing is real and, and that way the lessons, um, they stick and they're real and you learn from them. Other, otherwise, it uh, just seems like a, a fake holographic world to, to a soul. Yeah. Well, the way I like to exp exp um, explain it is it's the same reason we go to the movies. If you go to a movie, you want to get caught in the movie. You want to have the experience and the emotions and either the, the loving feelings of the sad or the scary or the drama. We want to have the emotions of it. It's the same reason we're here. So, yes, we agree to, um, to root assumptions. Okay, the earth is this and there's physical substance. And but what we agree to root assumptions so we can have the experience. It's almost like if you went to a movie and you sat there and start watching the movie and you went, oh, well, it's not real, you know. Those are just little pixels of light blinking off and on. You think those are people up there, but they're not really people. That's a good analogy. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, well, it takes the fun away. It takes the yeah. fun away. It's like, well, I wanted to have the experience. Stop telling me it's just a movie. I want to get into it. So it's the same thing that's happening. So I will say for me anyway, Jonathan, if somebody tells me I can't do something, oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me I can't do something because I will prove you wrong. I, like, I don't like boundaries. And so to me, what I feel like we're doing, for me anyway, in my reality, is we're starting to wake up from feeling like we're victims of this reality, of this plane, that we're actually creators in this plane because so many people are stuck in a nightmare. We came here for the garden, for the fun, for the experience. The same reason we go to the movies, to learn something or to have the experience or to have compassion or to experience love or to go on merry-go-rounds and feel that or you know, be competitive and play sports or something. We came here to me <laughs> to expand the consciousness and to have experiences. And so, do you understand there's so many of us that have gotten, I don't want to include me in it, but we are. So many of us get caught in the illusion that this is so real. We got so caught in the movie that so many people now are suffering and struggling and unhappy and they don't know it's just a movie. And so, if you go to a movie and you don't like what you see, 
um, you don't go up to the screen and try and change the characters on the movie, right? You go to mm -hmm. the projector and change the film that's going on in there. But a lot of people, if they don't like the movie, they'll walk out, they'll leave, they go, I don't like this movie. And that's what people are doing in this life. It's like they're not happy with their lives, they're not happy with how things are, and they leave, they check out, they go back to spirit, they go back to, it's like, this is not fun. Yeah, I tell people the worst thing they can do is commit suicide because it erases all the experience <clears throat> that they, they've just gained in their, their life and all the good and bad. Uh, you know, you talk about going to the movie and experiencing these emotions. We have to experience the bad side of life, too, and get through that. And oh, oh, oh. Did you say we have to again? <laughs> oh, Jonathan, them spiting words. I, <laughs> I don't know that I, for me, this is, again, my story, my perception, my belief system. But I go for love and expansion and no fears and no boundaries. I, I will go there way more than I'll go into restriction, victim, should, ought to, have to, need to, restrict. Uh, that's my life, though. That's where I go. But... Yeah. I don't feel, we've already had enough of the bad. I think that if we want to have the, the opposites just to experience them, we need dichotomy or we need um, contrast yes. just to experience it. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's a chair, that's the space, that's a, you know, a carpet, that's a kitchen table, whatever, for the experience. But I no longer believe that we have to suffer. And I don't believe we came here to suffer. I think we f forgot who we are and that we're creators and that we can, we were created in the creator's image, right? The creator's an, a creator. So I don't feel like we look like, you know, God, the way I was raised, right? I don't feel like we look like God. We're made it in, in the creator's creative forces energy. So we're creators and we've forgotten that. We think that we're victims. Yeah. And again, uh, I'm sure my perception. Yeah, I I wasn't talking so much about victims, but just like uh, having your heart broken. Yeah. You know, those kind of things and getting through it and yeah. overcoming this, you know, your, your heart's broken and you can, how you handle it is important. How you yes, get through it. I agree with you. And yeah. again, we're here for the emotions. Some people like to go to scary horror movies. I don't like those. Yeah. You know, some people like to go to, Dramas. I got enough of that in my life with my clients. I don't need any more drama. I like romantic comedies. So that's what I want my life to be about, you know, walking on the beach, enjoying life, traveling. So I, I would go to those movies. And I mean that literally, but we've all had, we've all experienced pain um, for the experience and, or we believe in it. I just, my goal is not to stay stuck in it and think that, well, that's just, I love it when people go, well, we're only human. And I go, we got to start redefining the definition of human. Because mm, yeah. <laughs> we're way more amazing than, it. when somebody says, well, I'm only human, it almost sounds like they're, you know, oh, that's an excuse to be a lower level or, yes. you know. This is uh, just, and I'm sharing my perception with you, Jonathan. So thanks for playing. <laughs> I, I understand. Um, well, tell us about how you use, uh, what would I call this? Um, you use sort of positive imagination to help you achieve certain goals. And I, I think a good example I, I heard on your videos was how you met your, your husband and how that all kind of came out. Can you tell us about that? Uh, see, this is when I used parallel universes. Thanks for letting me share that story because it's a profound example of how we create a reality and I used parallel universes. So, See if I can keep it brief. Years and years ago, actually 36 years ago now, I met this guy, totally head over heels. Oh my gosh, totally in love with him. Musician, okay? Do you know how musicians don't usually make commitments? <laughs> uh, I'm a musician, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, as soon as I saw him, I went, oh my gosh, this is my guy. I mean, this is who I'm supposed to be with. He wanted nothing to do with me. It's like, no, you're blonde. I don't like blondes. I, I don't ever want to be in a relationship. Not going to happen. Not attracted to you. Blah, blah, blah. I was so broken hearted. We talk about broken, you know, hearts. And I live in California. He moved all the way over to the East Coast to be in a band there. And I'm like, oh my gosh. He's like, you know, don't, I'm done. Don't talk to me. But that kind of stuff, right? So I was devastated. So 
two years later, I mean, he was gone for two years and I still was in love with the guy. Did you have another relationship or were you alone? No, not when you're in love with somebody. No way. I'm a blue, yellow bluser. Once we fall in love with somebody, bam, that's really hard for us to let go. You think he is a soulmate or somebody you've known in a previous life? Oh, he's definitely somebody I know from other lifetimes. I even know what some of them are, one in particular, but I definitely, there was a recognition there. Anyway, he was a too scared. Oops, you won't run away. So I learned about parallel universes. And I went, now, wait a second. If this is true in quantum physics, parallel universe and however we believe is what creates our reality. So I went, well, I'm going to use that. Okay. If that's real, I should be able to use it. So I sat down and I did a meditation, a really in-depth meditation. Um, um, and what I did was I realized, I'm going to call it universe one, that I was in universe one where I didn't believe I was lovable. I didn't believe I was attractive. I was struggling for love. You know, basically I had a lot of insecurities and I went, well, no wonder I'm, I'm resonating in that frequency of things don't work out for me. So I imagined, and I did it visually where I imagined parting a veil. I saw like a membrane or a veil there and I visualized opening it up and going into universe number two. And I looked around and I went, nope, he's still on the East Coast. He's seen some girl that likes the band. I would feel guilty, you know, not letting him do that. So I went, well, this is not the universe I'm supposed to stay in. This is not my right frequency. So I kept going and I would check out the next one. Again, still didn't feel right. So I'm going to say I went into universe number five. I'm just late. I'm numbering them. So for convenience sake, mm -hmm. into universe five. And I, I shifted how I was feeling about myself. I felt different. I went, I, I really had the experience in me of being lovable, of being attractive. This was 36 years ago now, okay? So <laughs> no judge. <laughs> Don't judge <laughs> my age now. <laughs> or you can if you want. It's okay. Um, I felt attractive. I felt like he really wanted me. I had, I, it was so real to be in that universe, again, if you've seen the movie yesterday or even, you know, Back to the Future, all of those, it was so real. I could smell the grass and I saw in that universe, I saw in my inner eye that this guy had given notice to the band. He was giving notice to the band right then. He was breaking up with whatever girl he was seeing at the time. He was going to go, he was going to leave the East Coast. He was going to go to Iowa to see his meditating friends. He was going to go to Los Angeles to see his rock and roll friends. And he was coming back to Santa Barbara because he actually, we loved each other. And he wanted to be back here and we were going to be together, right? I saw that so real. I knew that that reality, that that parallel universe existed. It was real. So I aligned with it. Felt it in every cell of my body. Two weeks after I had that experience, I had a feeling to call him. And it's like, I wasn't stalking him. People go, oh my gosh, you were stalking the poor guy. And I go, no, this was not. Why wouldn't I call him? We were in love with each other and he wanted to be with me. So of course, that was my new experience. So I called him. I hadn't talked to him for two years now, okay? Mm. Um, so I go, well, how's it going? He goes, well, two weeks ago, the day I did that image, Mm. Two weeks ago, I gave notice to the band. I was seeing this girl, but she's too young. It's not going to work out. I'm going to go to Iowa, see my friends there. I'm going to go to Los Angeles, and I'm coming back to Santa Barbara. We have been together now since then. Mm, that's awesome. Okay. Um, it, it was like, and it was, the weird thing is, is so first of all, when I saw that I actually did it, I got a little nervous. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, this is real. But here's the weird thing. So people could go, well, you know, you either stalked him or it was a coincidence, or maybe he loved you all along anyway. And he just grew and I go, no, I shifted. I changed my experience consciously. I changed my experience. Now here's the cool thing. Well, that's cool. And in, in that's self Jonathan, but watch this. In universe number one, not only was I single and not being able to be with who I wanted to, all my girlfriends were single and complaining that there were no good men and they wanted to get married and some of them wanted to have kids. They were all complaining about being single. When I got into universe five, all of my girlfriends were now with boyfriends, engaged and getting married, and they subsequently had kids right when I went into universe five. And that, you know, 30 some years ago, I wanted to go up to all of them and go, oh, you should see in universe one, you're single and you're complaining about it. But I, I figured back then there's no way I could say that to them. They would have thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I do this a lot. I do this to get trips to Hawaii, to go to Brazil, to change the weather. Now I got I to gotta remember to do that to change the smoke and the fires here. <laughs> but it's a very powerful tool. 
And when people go, well, that's not possible, go, you know what? A lot of things that sound science fiction are now science fact, like flight and going to the moon and cell phones and, you know, all kind, and every so much of what we have now used to be considered science fiction. This is another one that they write about in movies. We see it all the time, but we just think that's fantasy. And I go, uh. <laughs> well, not only movies, but um, that's long been a theme of in comic book stories. Uh, the Justice League and the Avengers. Uh, there's, you know, there's Earth One and Earth Two. And Earth One, Superman's costume's a little different. He's got gray around the temples. You know, Wonder Woman looks like this. So yeah, that's been a common theme in in comic books, and I think it filters into mainstream consciousness yeah. from other media sources. Well, it's how people can do spontaneous healings. It's how people can create abundance and financial money, you know, and it's how people can can change their love life, their home, their health, their their jobs. I mean, once we really get that that's real, I mean, can you imagine the first time somebody came back when they thought the world was flat and someone came back and went, no, you guys, it's round. Can you imagine the, con no way, wait, you're not going to trick me. How can people stay on the other side of the world? How did they not fall off? not going to trick me. It's like it was out of our realm of comprehension, mm -hmm. which is why when I study it and I go, okay, there's got to be a way to implement that. Okay. Aerodynamics, we should be able to fly, right? Parallel universes, we should be able to use those consciously. So I prove it to myself first over and over and over again. And then I write about it and teach about it. Yeah. It reminds me of a, a chapter in one of Robert Monroe's books, uh, I think it was journeys out of the body. He gets out, gets out of his body at night. You know, he's sleeping in bed with his wife. He gets out of his body. He looks at the wall of his bedroom and there's this black hole in the wall, uh, about this big. And <laughs> the first night he just put his hand in it and he's feeling around like, wow, this is crazy. The next night he goes, the, the hole's there. Something grabs his hand. He's like, oh my God, he freaks out. Third night he's, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go through the hole. He goes through the hole. He describes, he's looking around. It's daytime. It's kind of this field uh, out in the countryside. And he goes flying off and uh, there's a town. He's describing the cars. Everything is a little different than what we are used to here. The technology. And he's describing all these things. And then he goes to this home and he goes down into the house and inside this guy's body, and he understands that that is him there at this other universe. Yeah. He's a scientist in a lab, and his wife is talking to him, and he's befuddled because he's sort of taken over this guy's body, so to speak, and, and he doesn't know what his wife is, and he's just uh, off. So he returns to this place a number of times, and. Um, and actually, the, the scientist, um, the wife ends up leaving him because of this befuddlement that has entered the, the scientist's life. And it's because Robert Monroe is sort of getting, interfering in, in a way with another him in this other life. And I've had experiences like that in my 54 years of astral travel. So um, have you ha had any of your uh, clients? describe all, being in an alter, you know, visiting one of these other places? Do you get people that, you know, confirm this uh, to you? Um, yeah, not as much as I confirm it more to other people, because let me explain to people too, because I hear people going, well, I tried it and it didn't work. When I moved from universe one to universe five, I absolutely dropped universe one. I didn't put my attention on it. I believed in universe five way more than I did one. I knew one existed, but I was aligning with it. So when people go, well, I tried it. I go, you know, if it didn't work, you're still attached to number one. And then, then it, there's nothing you have to overcome. You just let go of it. You stop believing in the, the emotions, the circumstances. You don't believe in those anymore. You believe over here. So they use like power, um, attraction or the love attraction, you know, all that's the 
this, talking about the same stuff, right? So I do have some people share to me different experiences. And I mean, I have, I had my radio show for 11 years. I had a lot of people on that had near death experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how many of them said when they were on the other side, they saw all their other lives simultaneously, all of them. They knew all their other selves in other lifetimes, but we're not trained to think that way. We're trained to think because we came here for this experience, but we've been limited to it now. So I feel like we're wanting to wake up and expand more so mm -hmm. that we can have a different type of experience. Because I think for me anyway, I'm tired of the old movie. Ah, yes. of them against us and fighting and victim and unhappiness and struggle and poverty. And so I'm shifting to a different perception, a different experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm still on the planet, but it's a different planet than the ones that are over there struggling and only seeing darkness. So yeah. have other people experienced it? Yes. Usually they talk about experiencing other lives or, or another frequency, a way to see it is that's why I can talk to people who have crossed over people who are no longer in physical form, quote unquote, they're just in another frequency. They're in another vibration. They're right there. I can talk to them. Um, right. And I've done it for years. Um, it's just, it's, it's expanding our concept of who we are and reality. That's all we're doing here. Yeah, I had my aura taken twice, and the first time I was in Salem, Mass. on Halloween night, <laughs> 1999, and um, uh, so I, I thought, you know, I, I've been going out of body for quite a while, since I was six, and what I tend to do is I lift out, and if I want to visit with my guide, I just kind of turn over my left shoulder and there he is at the end of a long dark tunnel. You know, cool. it's a bright light at the end. And I go through the tunnel and there he is. And I, I get to bathe in, in the, the, you know, the wash of energy. It's really awesome and this kind of thing. So, um, you know, I get to where I, I talk to my guide like they were a friend sitting next to me. You know, it's so. They uh, are. <laughs> and they are. And so <laughs> Yeah, I tell people there's never any moment that your guide is not looking over your shoulder because they're always, you know, time is different and, and this sort of thing. So um, I go, yeah, let's go do the aura thing. I was with my girlfriend and another girl. I said, yeah, let's go do that. It'd be fun. And I, I said in my mind to my guide, I said, I want you in the picture. So then I can show people, have nice. some kind of proof. And so I go and I sit down and I... And I can feel him there, you know, very strongly in the, the room or the space or whatever you want to call it. And uh, the guy takes the picture and it develops and hands it to me. And, and then sure enough, over my left shoulder is a, a dot of light. And I, I tell people it's, it's a huge ball of energy, but it looks small because it's far away at the end of a dark tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I use that as kind of the best proof that I can come up with that you have a guardian angel and they're always watching over you and so forth. That is real. Yep. 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 I'm curious because sometimes those cameras pick up the aura colors, the life colors that I see. And sometimes they pick up different colors because um, supposedly those aura cameras pick up the emotional energy of the person at the time. But I'm curious because I know what I see around you. What colors showed up in the in your aura picture? Do you remember? The first one is blue and purple. Yes. Okay. Well, but <laughs> what? Because what I'm seeing around you is a lot of violet, which is the purple color, uh -huh. and you're am sensitive tan. And and that's a blue tan combo. Um, cause violets are visionaries. They're the spiritual teachers and leaders and visionaries. They sense things. They know things. They're kind of older souls. And the tan that you've got with that tan blue combo, sensitive tan is tans are practical, logical. They're like engineers or scientists or can't, you know, they're, they, they, they're factual, but you've added a little bit of, there's a little bit of blue to it. So that makes it more factual with intuition. Like I sense this, I sense this, mm -hmm. but I definitely, I'm so glad it picked up the violet around you and that blue. That's cool. What did the second one, you said the first one showed up blue? The second blue? one was very kind of orange. Um, I was feeling very passionate about, uh, my first book was coming out. Nice. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was at a convention and the, the Monroe Institute had a, um, a booth there and, there was a guy there doing the pictures. So, um, yeah, I just felt very 
passionate and it, it, it's a very orange color, orange and yellow and orange. Yeah. Yeah. So see when I, cause I see a little bit of yellow around you too. When I had my picture taken, cause some of my clients have those cameras, I'm a blue and yellow who's added violet in the outer bands. Um, but the camera showed yellow, orange, and red. And I went, well, those are not my colors. What's the deal? And they said, oh, the way we measure it, that means you have a lot of energy, a lot of creative energy and a lot of energy or a lot of passion, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it was an emotional energy more than the life colors that I pick out. Because the life colors show me the theme of someone, you know, uh -huh. um, like violets are here to educate the masses to think bigger. They're visionaries, they're leaders. Um, they see bigger concepts where tans are more linear and mm -hmm. practical. Um, so violets are drawn to the media. Duh, look what you're doing. Um, <laughs> the media or the arts or writing, you know, that's- I've violet. been in IT media tech for 35 years. I'm retired now kind of from that, yeah. but like um, I was at Harvard 12 years, you know, I've done the media for, for Bill Gates right on down the line, you know, and um, I'm very into the science. Like you are, I, I'm i the, um, you know, paranormal guy too, but I also love the science and I, I, I understand that the science is really behind all of it. it. It's not weird stuff. It's just really science to me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's practical side. So violets are visionaries, and that's why I can talk fast with you because violets go one fifty, and tans are tech and engineer, and you know computers like very factual details. Step one, step two, step three. But violets are one fifty, <laughs> and violets, you violets think things are common sense, and how come people don't see what we see? Hmm. Okay, so it's interesting combo though because they're exact opposite personality types. So you see the life force, and that stays the same throughout our life and then yeah. but our emotions will change our auric colors on a day-to-day -day basis would you say uh, okay that? so the way i see them is the one or two bands closest to a person's body are their life colors meaning it reveals just like astrology numerology palmistry iridology it reveals who the person is what what you decided to do when you came here what kind of person you wanted to be hmm. the theme what you wanted to experience your personality, what you are and how you want relationships, how you are in relationships, what you need in relationships, careers you're going to be drawn to. Because violets are also drawn to things like teaching or psychology, or they're drawn to causes or politics and law. Okay, that's a violet thing. So, and yellows don't, you know, you got a little bit of yellow. Yellows are more big kids at heart. Yellows are playful, sense of humor, creative ideas, can't sit still very well, right? So they're, they're different than violets. So the life colors, in my experience of doing this for 36 years now, don't really change, but the outer bands in the aura change depending on what's going on with the person mm -hmm. at the time. So if somebody gets really angry, I see red flaring up in their outer bands. Hmm. Or if somebody's pregnant, all of a sudden there's blue in their bands, even if it wasn't there before, that kind of stuff. Or if they're on vacation, I see a lot more yellow in their art, but that's a temporary thing. And but, you can see auras, the person doesn't have to be in the same room with you because right. we're on the, the camera and you can see them. I, I do this on the phone. I do this on TV, on radio. I don't have to see. I can talk to somebody on the other side and tell you what their aura colors were here. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's like a frequency. You don't have to be in the same room as the radio station that's broadcasting either, right? You just tune into the frequency and you can tell all kinds of stuff about people. And that's the psychic stuff too. Yeah. Well, we have a few minutes left. Um, what would you like to talk about? Uh, do you want to mention your website? What is your website? Sure. I have a I have two websites. The big one is auracolors.com, A U R A colors.com. And people can go there and take the free quiz to find out what their aura colors are. Hmm. And I've got videos on there for free that people can go watch about their aura colors. Mm -hmm. um, I've got all kinds of videos on there and courses on there, like teaching people how to bend spoons and be psychic and use parallel universes. I have all kinds of um, my TEDx talk is on there, all my I've been on The View and, and Dr. Oz and all of those things are on there. But mostly I want to help people have fulfilling and happy lives and do what they came here to do, to be able to have the experiences they planned on having here when they came here, even though we've got free will. Some people won't fulfill what they came here to do and other people will fulfill it and go, okay, I did that, now what? <laughs> so yeah, auracolors.com. The other website is lovecolors.com. That's to help people... Take, um, find out which aura colors are compatible. It's a, it's a match site, so you can find friends and dates and 
partners on that site. Oh, oh. it matches you up with people that have compatible aura colors. So, do you think the um, these cameras that take your aura they're legit, and you would urge people to say, yeah, it's okay to have your aura picture taken? Okay. Anything that anything that first of all, I love that they show people what auras look like. That's exciting to me. It's like oh, because a lot of and I do want to say, even if people can't see them, although you'd be amazed how many people can see auras, especially children, mm. we all feel them. We all sense them. That's why you can be near someone and go, oh, I really like this person and feel comfortable with them. And other people, you don't like their energy. You want to stay away from. Mm. So we all feel the energy field. And some of the aura colors are compatible and some are, have a harder time being around each other. Mm. So, yes, I, I think they're cool just because, well, let me just say this. I've encountered a lot of people that see auras. Quite a few of them see the same colors that I do, but not everyone. Different healers go, oh, well, I see gold around that person. I go, oh, it looks yellow to me. Mm -hmm. You know, where they see a, a turquoise and I go, oh, well, I see a blue and a yellow. So it doesn't mean somebody's wrong and somebody else is right. Mm -hmm. It means we're having different experiences. It's what they say that means to you that should fit. Okay. Nice. Just I explain to people, we don't see the aura. We don't all see the aura or experience life the same, just like we don't taste food the same way. Cause there are people out there that like Brussels sprouts and I know they're not tasting what I'm tasting. <laughs> so we're having different experiences, but ask them what it means. You know, what, what they see and the same with the aura cameras, they should tell you if you've got orange in your aura, what that means. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, to leave us here today, like, what would you what bit of advice would you give to people out in the world who are having a tough time with just day to day grind? The first thing I would want to say to people always is go connect inside and really listen to your soul. Your soul knows exactly what it's doing. There's a higher part of you that's still intact, knows what it's doing here, knows everything is fine. Um, it's the, what people call the ego, you know, the, the small mm. I that gets into fear and struggle and you've forgotten who you are. So first of all, to reconnect with your higher self, your soul, with higher consciousness, with God, with universe, whatever you want to call it, really listen to that inner voice so that you can get out of fear. You don't want to spend your whole life here in fear and playing small and feeling like you're not enough or excuse me, <laughs> that life isn't safe or it's like, come on, this is a garden. We were created to explore and appreciate the garden here. And there's way more to you. You're loved unconditionally. Even if you don't feel that the source that created you, that brought you here, the source of who you are, it's unconditional love. You're loved. Mm -hmm. if, if people would know that, I feel like they'd be a little bit more yeah. less afraid to go out and, and feel who they are and really live their lives. So yeah. listen inside. Your soul knows exactly what it's doing and help your ego not be so afraid to listen to it so that it's, I, I don't see the egos wrong. I see the egos created like for the soul, the way that the eye was created for the body mm -hmm. is to help us perceive and interact with physical reality. It's not yes. bad. It just has limited perception. Yes. And the ego, the little eye that we are, has just been trained to believe a bunch of things that are kind of scary or bad or good or wrong or right or whatever. And so it's scared. It's trying to protect you. But just like the eye's not bad, your ego's not bad. It just has limited perception. So you want to help it expand its perception so it's happier and safer here. Well, I think that's sound advice. <laughs> so uh, with that, I'd like to say thank you for being with us today, Pam. I love your energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, some of the smoke is coming here now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you choked on that. Does that mean that's not the truth? No. <laughs> I appreciate that you let us play today. That was nice of you to just go off the rails and play. Yeah, well, I hope you'll come back again and, and chat with us uh, some more. And um, have a great day out there in California. And uh, we'll see you online. Okay, thanks again, Jonathan, for everything that you're doing and helping with the consciousness. I really appreciate it. All right. Bye now, Pam. Bye.